2025 is looking pretty stacked with retro heat. We've got some Travis apparel to look forward to, and he is not signing your Yeezys unless they were designed by Ye. We also found out what the next Dornbecker Freestyle Collection is going to contain. All of these stories and plenty more in this week's Sneaker Wrap. Hello everybody, it is me, Jordan Young, back with another banger. Every Saturday I do these episodes where we look back at some of the biggest sneaker stories from the past week, as well as talk about some exciting new sneaker announcements. If you guys want to keep up with me in real time, be sure to go over and follow me on the gram and if you like this type of content what can i say right let's start things off by looking back at this week's biggest releases want to start off with the adidas fear of god athletics collection this dropped earlier on in the week and if you go on the website you can find pretty much everything sat in a full-size run the only things that did sell out pretty quickly were the college pe colorways of the basketball shoe which are pretty cool to be fair but i think it's safe to say at this point that this collection has been received pretty underwhelmingly i made a video the other day talking about the flop of the adidas fear of god collab which has been received with mixed reviews feel free to go and check it out by clicking on the video above we also had the nocta website release of the drake hot step twos in the orange colorway these are set to drop on the nike sneakers app here in the uk in a couple of weeks time i think also had the book one haven release for you guys over there in the usa today we had a book one release here in the uk which released exclusively on the pro direct app i was pretty happy to get my hands on these and will be looking forward to bringing you my review of these when these come in early next week also had the takashi murakami slides which dropped on his website but apart from that it was a pretty dry week did you guys come up on anything feel free to let me know right let's kick it into some news and one of the big stories this week that got a lot of og collectors like myself excited was the announcement that we're going to be getting the black metallic coming out in spring 2025 no information as to whether or not this is going to be some kind of a reimagined jordan i felt like this particular sneaker could be a good candidate for the whole reimagined thing that's been going down with other similar type models but no information there. I wouldn't mind seeing these come out with a bit of reimagined treatment, maybe the kind of cloudy or milky outsole, maybe a slightly aged netting on the side. I, to be honest, wouldn't mind that. But either way, I don't have any Black Metallic 5s in the collection right now, so I will be looking forward to these. But if you still have a crispy pair from 2016, you'll probably be thinking these are coming out again too soon. What do you think about that? Now alongside that announcement, we also heard that we are going to be getting these again, the Air Jordan 12 flu games in 2025 and this is what i'm talking about when i say people that are in possession of the last retro that maybe haven't put that many kilometers on them or miles won't be that excited about these coming back out again because we've still got a fresh pair in the cut it's almost crazy to me to think that this shoe next year is going to be almost a decade old that's crazy We've also had some first looks at one of this holiday season's most exciting Air Jordans. Of course, it's the Air Jordan 11 release. Although to be fair, it's not really that exciting anymore, it seems for the younger generation who seem to be unenamored with the Air Jordan 11, but at least for people like me, this is an exciting release. These are the Air Jordan 11 Columbias, or the last time they came out back in 2014, I think, they were called the Legend Blues. And these were the shoes that MJ wore during the 1996 All-Star Game, which was back in San Antonio. Very nostalgic shoe, very clean shoe. We've got these early images, courtesy of my man XC Sneaker, who is still using the Motorola Razor. We've had some official images of the Trevor Scott Jordan apparel line that's expected to release this month including a few t-shirts some hoodies some pants there's no exact release date mentioned nor are there any prices that I've been able to get a hold of but these are the pieces that he's been seen wearing in recent times featuring in his ad campaign for the Jumpman Jacks and I'm sure these are going to be incredibly popular and will sell out pretty quickly but I'm not bowled over by the designs or anything like that what do you guys think speaking of Travis Scott while he was doing the this college tour this past week he was seen signing some sneakers and someone tried to hand him a pair of Yeezys to sign but he ended up denying them saying that he's not going to sign any Yeezys unless they were signed by Ye. 
And this is kind of cool to see, I suppose. I mean, these guys have been boys for a long time and comes off the back of Ye's very public and very famous disavowments of Adidas and their recent release of the Yeezys that he says he didn't have any involvement in creatively approving. Speaking of apparel and collabs, this LRG t-shirt or collaboration I thought was pretty cool and comes off the back of this viral video featuring this guy who is seen holding a whole bag of food and drink being kind of mocked and teased on the streets by these girls who are saying that his fit or his look wasn't fresh. I'm sure you guys have seen this video. Hey. And in honor of this guy's actual freshness, it has to be said, LRG have teamed up to release a whole collaboration with this guy and they are splitting the profits 50-50. And I think some of these pieces are really cool. I can remember the mid 2000s to the early 2010s when LRG was popping off. Big fan of the brand, would love to get some more pieces going actually, cause I've got fond memories of this. Did you guys ever rock with LRG? The Joe Fresh Goods New Balance 1000 collab is closer than we think. Apparently these are dropping on the of April so just merely days away. If you guys wanted to check out my own review of the New Balance 1000 feel free to click on the video above. A lot of people are looking forward to this sneaker and I think they are really dope. Both of these colorways go really hard and Joe Fresh Goods released this pretty cool and pretty funny advertisement which a lot of people who have been long standing in the sneaker game will recognize. It's a parody of the viral video back in 2011 where the Get Money Boys were interviewed outside a mall having just recently picked up the Concord First guys to get a pair of shoes today. What's your name, sir? Yo, this live, yo. Deontay Jackson. Look, I'm a shoe connoisseur. You know, we didn't get money, boys, from Out West 290. You know, we've been getting money. We've been getting shoes. Earlier, who was at every line for every shoe drop? Curtis Solomon, I, I, I'm a shoe connoisseur. I've been getting shoes. It was crazy out here. Like, you know, me and a group of my friends, you know, from Lakewood, we get a lot of money, so it's nothing to us to buy shoes. And I thought this was pretty cool, pretty nostalgic, and very much a if you know, you know type thing. Keep an eye on the Joe Fresh Goods website as well as his IG stories and stuff like that for update information. I would expect a wider release for these to wheel out through retailers and the New Balance website probably later on this month. So we've got a few new Air Force Ones, which is kind of interesting because wasn't it just last week that we heard from Nike directly that they were going to be scaling down production on the Air Force One all black and the all whites. But it seems like they're not slowing down any kind of production when it comes to collabs or special projects. These are the dot swoosh. Nike Air Force One 404 Errors, which are being launched exclusively in line with the Dot Swoosh program, which if you don't know, is the whole Nike slash digital asset slash NFT type program, which you have to sign up to. The release is expected to wheel out via the sneakers app, though most people that are gonna be given access to them are members of the whole Dot Swoosh program. Shoes themselves are seamless and patent and feature the 404 error on the side. Not a huge fan of these sneakers myself, I'm not really into the whole seamless patent vibe. They look a little bit clown shoeish to me, but I'm sure they will be popular. I'm sure they'll be very limited and I'm sure they'll, as a result, be very expensive. Now we have additionally been seeing some CPFM Nike Air Force One colorways. We first saw it was, I think, the green and the purplish pair a few months ago. And we've since seen another olive or chive type colorway surface. But apparently, according to Little Yachty, these are going to be friends and family pairs. I'm not sure whether or not we're going to see like a restock of the black and the white pair, which again would be ironic considering that Nike said they aren't going to be making any more all white and all black Air Force Ones, unless of course they're a collab. But I wouldn't be getting your hopes up too soon about seeing a wide release just yet. We've had a little bit of stock update information with regards to probably the most anticipated SB Dunk Low of the year, the Futura collab. Apparently there's going to be something in the region of of 30k pairs available. This falls in line with the rumors that we'd heard previously that this release was going to be hyper limited, maybe even just a skate shop exclusive. 
We also saw some pictures of the release next to the friends and family pair, which are supposed to be numbered around 250 pairs. I think both pairs are really nice, to be fair. I'm pretty happy that we're getting the pair that we are. Speaking of SBs, we've also had our first look at the dinner plate SBs, which are going to be releasing this year. No specific dates right now. They look pretty cool. I'm a sucker for green, so these are going to speak to me for sure on that basis. But what do you guys think of these? First looks at the Air Jordan 3 Amamanier in the dark colorway. And once again, these have come courtesy of XC Sneaker, who kind of looks like maybe he ran these over in his car before cracking out the Motorola Razr to take a photo of these again. I actually think, low key, it's part of his job or part of his remit to try to make the shoe look as bad as possible when leaking these early pictures so that he doesn't or they don't give away too much. As it stands, these pretty much look like a Jordan 3 black cement, maybe from 1994, that cement print has just faded away. It's a nice looking colorway. It's no doubt gonna be good quality. PJ Tucker this week revealed his very own Nike collaboration on the Air Flight 89. He was seen wearing these warming up ahead of the Clippers versus Nuggets game earlier this week. They feature this really nice icy blue design with some pretty good looking perforated and tumbled leather on the upper mixed together with this really clean midsole and outsole combo. They also have the PJ17 on the heel and they came in this pretty cool Nike slash Samsonite luggage packaging that may or may not release as part of the shoes. I don't think so though. I'm pretty sure that would be like a friends and family type thing. No release info at this time, but with the playoffs fast approaching, I could imagine seeing some release info leak out over the next few weeks with a release surely set to take place before the end of the season. I think these are really clean. I think they're really nice. We've had our first look at the Master Splinter Adidas Superstar from the whole Ninja Turtles pack. If you guys wanted to see my review on that shoe, which I think is really cool, feel free to click on the video above. This colorway obviously inspired by Master Splinter himself. A mixture of shaggy suede on the upper, the custom insoles, the Debray, the Ninja Turtles reference on the tongue. I can't see from these pictures whether or not we're going to be getting the same sort of packaging as with the Ninja Turtles shoes, but these look really cool. And if you got the Turtles ones, you're probably going to have to grab these ones, isn't it? The 20th edition of the Nike Dornbecker Freestyle Project is set to go down this year. And this week we saw the release list. We're going to be getting an Air Jordan 6. There's also going to be an Air Max DN in two colorways, a Nike Air Max Sunder, which is going to be a woman's only, a Nike Air 180, as well as an Air Zoom Pegasus 41. So a pretty cool looking lineup. But if you're like me, you're sat there wondering why are they doing the Air Jordan 6 again as a Dornbecker. We had the Air Jordan 6 Dornbecker in 2009. This was later retroed back in 2019. And so we've had an Air Jordan 6 Dornbecker twice over, albeit a retro. And so why do we need to see another one? Why couldn't they use any other model from Jordan brands that they haven't before? I'm not sure what's going on there. Although depending on how the design comes out, I'll still be keen to cop. It's not so much sneaker news, but it is a pretty big brand in the whole sportswear and streetwear crossover scene. But Champion sold this week for a billion dollars to Authentic Brands Group. I think this is the same group that has bought up a whole bunch of brands, including brands like Reebok. And the $1.4 billion number has kind of caught a few people off guard. Some people have been saying that this is a big time undervaluing for a brand like Champion. Some people reckon that Champion have gotten a good deal by being able to sell it for $1.4 billion. But what do you guys think of this deal? Fed some detailed looks at another Kobe 8 Pro Tro. These are the Lakers home. These are set to come out in the fall of this year for the $190 retail price points. Pretty good looking, I mean, they're stock standard. It's predominantly all whites with the dark swoosh and the gold accents, very Lakerish. Nothing crazy, nothing amazing, but still definitely very clean. Some Adidas news, Lionel Messi and Adidas are gonna be working together on a Samba inspired by the Inter Miami pink colorway. No release info on these, $100 is the price points and I think these are pretty cool. The packaging looks pretty cool. The colorway is exciting. You've got the messy logo there on the tongue. And if you're like me and you are 
a big fan of Messi and consider him the GOAT, these would be a cool pair of shoes to get your hands on, I reckon. More Air Jordan 5 set to release this time. We have a black and white or a white and black colorway. These are set to come out towards the fall of the year and do look pretty nice. We've got a predominantly white upper with some black accents on the midsole as well as the eyelids and the liner. I see outsole. It's a good looking shoe, but at $200 and coming out in a time where it feels like even Jordan 5s are getting quite played out. I don't know if these will be as popular as they might have been had the release schedule been a little bit quieter from Jordan brands on the 5s, but yeah, it's a nice shoe, it's a pass, it's a potential cop on sale for me. What do you guys think of these? Paisa boys have previewed their upcoming Nike Air Force One and Cortez collaborations. Paisa boys is a brand deeply rooted in Mexican American culture and is a rising star of the LA streetwear scene. And this collection puts both sneakers in a pretty cool harmonious black and white color scheme adorned with this pseudo paisley pattern. Pretty cool looking shoes. Again, it's another Air Force One. Remember Nike said that they were gonna be quietening down on the Air Force Ones, but here we are with a gazillion Air Force One collaborations. I do actually think the Cortez go really hard. And these will of course be coming out with a bandana as well as a discount code to get you some Dickies and a flannel. So let's finish off by talking about some of this week's biggest sneaker releases. If you guys are up for the Nike Dunk Low veneers, here in the UK, there are some um, raffles out there for these as I speak to you now. Otherwise, it's pretty dead in the UK. You do have the Air Jordan 3 Green Glows, which are set to come out next Friday, as well as the Air Jordan Airship collaboration with Awake New York. For you guys over there in the US, you have on April the 10th, the Jordan 1 High OG Metallic Silver. I think these are gonna be cinder blocks. April the 12th, you have the second iteration of the Clot Adidas Superstar in this predominantly black colorway. April the 13th, you have the Adidas Crazy 98 or Kobe's second shoe with Adidas and then on the same day you also have the trifecta of Kobe's including the Kobe 8 Venice Beach, the Kobe 6 Pro Tro Italian Camo and the Phillies colorway of the Kobe 4. You also have the Air Jordan 5 SE sale. And that is it for this week's episode. Thank you guys as always for taking the time to watch the video. Special shout out to all of my members for supporting me on the channel. If you guys want to help me in my content creation, feel free to become a member. All of your contributions and your super thanks and all that type of stuff is greatly appreciated. If you don't want to do that, that is absolutely fine. The least you could do for me is hit the like button before you bounce. Don't forget to drop a comment. Love reading what you guys have to say. And listen, I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care for now and peace.